Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. Remember that time back in high school? We were sitting around in the cafeteria, and Jesus says to Moses, he says, <laughs> now, I don't want to say we're old, <laughs> but yeah. there are some things. There, there are not a lot of people older than us. <laughs> we're going to talk about today that are going to make you feel old. Unless you're like 18, then you're going to go, I don't even know what the hell they're right. talking about. Yeah. And that, my friends, is next on Men Are So Smart. Hi there, welcome to another episode of Men Are So Smart. I am Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. Nice to be with you. Thanks for watching today. We appreciate it. On the show, things, <laughs> the things we're going to talk about, there's a very good chance they're going to make oh, you feel old. Man. In fact, this one that we're showing right now, what do you call that, Ronnie? That's a Walkman? or Yeah, that was a portable, I think a Discman is what they called it back then. Yeah, yeah, and I can remember when they first came out, man, I got one of them, and I put it in my BMW, and had the little cassette adapter that you plugged in. Right. <laughs> There's only one problem. You, it, you couldn't drive. No. <laughs> if you were moving at all, it skipped. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I even tried, like, holding it in my hand, to no avail. Still right. skipped. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know what? I was able to tell people, I have a CD in I my got car. One. Yeah. I got one. Uh, and they were not inexpensive. I know I paid over $100 for mine. All right. Did you know Ralph Macchio, who played Daniel in The Karate Kid, was supposed to be a teen in the 1984 movie, but The Karate Kid, but he was actually 22 at the time. Today, he's all grown up, <laughs> aren't we all? Uh, so much, in fact, that he's now older than Mr. Miyagi was at that time. Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, Pat oh. Morita, who played Miyagi, was a mere 52 back then, while Machio is currently 57. Holy cow. How is this possible? That doesn't sound right. And more celebrities may be older than you really think. Stay tuned. Yep. Uh, this next one. So kids graduating this year. Uh-huh. They were born in the 2000s. Yeah. Uh, for some of us, it's hard to imagine that the 1990s weren't just a few years ago. But consider this. Most teenagers getting their high school diploma this year were born in 2001. Oh, that's remarkable. So when they hear the Prince song, 1999, yeah. they think, oh, that was a couple years before I was born. <laughs> Woohoo! Damn! Thanks for that little jab right there. That hurts. Uh, here it's breaking news. Here it comes. Breaking news. Bart Simpson is pushing 40. <laughs> he still looks pretty much safe. Yeah, he doesn't have the age a bit. That must be that new wink, uh, wrinkle cream they have. I don't know what his regimen is, but i got to look he, at he it. He may be perennially eight years old on The Simpsons, but there is a major clue as to how old he'd actually be if the series ca characters aged like the rest of us. In an episode from season three called I Married Marge. Oh, Marge. <laughs> Uh, it aired December 26, 1991. Oh! We learned that Marge first became pregnant after she and Homer went on a date to see The Empire Strikes Back, Ooh. which was released in May of 1980. That means Bart <clears throat> was likely born in early 81, which means that today he'd be 38. Dang. Bart, you're doing good, though. He's... Cowabunga. Yeah. <laughs> Eat my shorts, dude. All right, now this one, some people may not remember this. Baby Jessica. Oh, yeah, I haven't thought about that in a long she time. She fell down a well in yeah. Midland, Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When she was just 18 months old. 22 feet below the surface, and it was a big hubbub to how they were going to they were going to rescue her. Uh -huh. While well, watch it on TV as rescuers worked around the clock to free baby Jessica. And finally, they pulled her out after 58 agonizing hours. Wow. We'll always remember her as everybody's baby, even though she's anything but a baby these days. She's 33 years old <laughs> and has two kids of her own. Yikes. Well, I'm sure that was uh, some PTSD right there when that was going oh, on. dang. And yeah. I'm sure that probably had a long-lasting effect on her. I bet she probably doesn't walk over any wells or any mm -mm. manhole covers or yeah, anything she, she like that She ain't throwing anymore. coins in a fountain, no, I'll tell you that. No, no. The future in Back to the Future Part 2 is now four years in the past. <laughs> the past. Was, yeah. 
I saw it yesterday. Who can forget the crowd-pleasing comedy Back to the Future Part 2 when Marty McFly and Doc Brown take the time-traveling DeLorean into the future? They picked a date that, at the time, seemed ridiculously far away. Who knew what the world would look like on October 21st, 2015? I do. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, four years ago, we found out. We've long passed the year deemed the future in the 89 movie, and unlike the 2015 they imagined at the time, we still don't have ejection seats, self-drying jackets, bionic brain implants, or hoverboards that actually hover. Uh, I'm disappointed about that. Yeah, well, someday. Probably yep. not in our lifetime. No. Uh, this next one, all GeoCities web pages. I don't even know what that is. They've been gone for a decade. So GeoCities was if you if you were like a website builder, uh -huh. you use GeoCities to build back in the day to build the, with the like website. a software program. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Uh, if you built a website in the '90s, you probably used the host site GeoCities, uh, and I had one. I was very uh, ahead of your time. Very primitive. It was very oh, okay. primitive, but it I had a website. Uh, it was a beautiful era of pixelated graphics, animated uh, GIFs, and broken HTML, and now it's all gone. Just gone. Mm. Uh, Yahoo bought the GeoCities in a multi-billion dollar deal in 1999, and then closed everything down a decade later. All 300 billion pages just poof up gone. and gone. Wow. Yep. Huh. And they paid billions for it. Yes. And they just pissed it away. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Remember the 1984 movie, 16 Candles? I kind of do. I do. It was a rom-com. Well, it's now old enough to run for president. <laughs> <laughs> check, check this out. Um, to be eligible to run for the office of president, you got to be a citizen of the United States, of course. And the movie really is, is not a, technically a person. Uh, was definitely made in the USA, though, and be at least 35 years old, which as of today, which happens to be, may, may the, the force, force be with, with you. you, it will be 35 years old. Dang. Holy cow. Well, Molly Ringwald. I remember that name. She's from the She's, Sacramento yeah, area. The Sacramento. Absolutely. Yeah, area. Yeah, that movie was, oh, it, it, it's kind of a coming-of-age yeah. movie. It's uh, fairly it, important. It kind of shaped that decade. Yeah. Uh, so, if you remember the Traveling Wilburys... I still listen to the Traveling Wilburys. They're amazingly talented. Every one of them there, obviously, is a star in their own right. Mm -hmm. uh, when the Traveling Wilbury, Wilburys released their first album in 1988, they seemed like old men to anyone under 30 at the mm -hmm. time. Where it turns out they weren't nearly as old as we all thought. The youngest was Tom Petty, who tragically just passed away uh, a while back. He was only 37 at the time. Hmm. Roy Orbison was the oldest at 52. The others, Bob Dylan, Jeff Lynne, and George Harrison, were all in their 40s. In fact, the median age for the Traveling Wilburys was a mere 44 years old, which hardly seems old to us today. Yeah, no kidding. Boy, you know what? I think uh, Bob Dylan and Jeff Lynne are the only... Guys left out of that group, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's we we deemed that a super group. Yes, they were super groups. Yep. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighborhood. You, you be, be mine. mine. Could, Could you, you be, be mine? mine? Kids today haven't grown up with Mister Rogers' Neighborhood for almost 18 years. It's been off the air. <sighs> Oh, I wonder what King Friday's doing nowadays. Yeah, and uh, what was the cat's name? Meow meow. Meow meow. Meow meow. Yeah, and then there was the trolley. Yep. And uh, oh boy. From 68, that's 1968 for some of you, <laughs> until 2001, beloved children's series Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood taught generations of kids about kindness and imagination. Though Fred Rogers hosted almost a thousand episodes. He, unfortunately, could not live forever. So anyone born in the early 2000s or later probably can't hum along to the melody. Um, so tragically, when we lost him, 
that just all went away. Yep. Although I'm sure it's still available in reruns. A thousand episodes. Yeah. Holy cow. Well, didn't they didn't they just come out with a movie recently about Mr. Tom Rogers? Tom Hanks starred yeah. as Mr. Rogers. Yeah. yeah. So you know what? He's uh he's been immortalized. Yeah, he's been a wonderful role model. Yes. Yeah. Uh okay, now get this. Mick Jagger. You mean Mike Jaggard? <laughs> as your dad called him. Yeah. <laughs> Mick Jagger is a great grandfather. Again. Which means his kid has a kid who, who has, has a, a kid. kid. Dang. Talk if, about a Rolling Stone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> In fact, he has two great-grandchildren, Ezra and Romy, both belonging to his 26-year-old granddaughter, Assisi Jackson, daughter of his eldest child, uh, Jade Jagger. Uh, someday in the not-too-distant future, Ezra and Romy will be able to say, you sang that like Start Me Up? Yeah, my great-grandfather wrote that. Oh, dang, that's just so wrong. Although, he's looked like a grandfather since about 1975. True. So, yeah. it shouldn't be that shocking, I uh, guess. This just in, Keith Richards is a great, 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 great grandfather. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what uh, planet he's really from. I don't know, but I yeah. want to get my water from there. <laughs> uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch oh. is now a 43-year-old mom. Oh. When the series Sabrina first hit the airwaves in the late 90s, we could scarcely imagine its star Melissa Joan Hart becoming an adult someday, much less a parent with her own teen witches. <laughs> well, both of those things have happened, my friends. The series began with Sabrina learning she has magical powers on her 16th birthday. Now Hart is 43, the mother of three sons. The oldest is 13, wow. which means he's just a few ways, uh, years away from learning whether or not he has magical powers. <laughs> I hope he does. Yeah. Magic. And then, of course, uh, they had a couple of really, her aunts, I think, on the show. One of them was Caroline Ray. Yeah, very who funny. Who I think is unbelievably funny. Yeah. I still, I, I enjoy her quite a bit. Uh, okay, this next one. If you can't vote, you've probably also never licked a postage stamp. Oh, my God. Because, now, back in the day, if you were sending out mass mailings, like when we did our uh, wedding invitations, we just had a sponge. And we sponge them and stick them. Mm -hmm. Now they're all, you know, they're just self-adhesive. Nobody, nobody in the last, I, I guess in the, since 2002 was the last year of the, you had to moisten it, post it. Stamp. I'll be honest with you. I don't think I've sent a, a <laughs> piece of mail since 2002. <laughs> I, I, I haven't bought a stamp in 100 years. <laughs> oh, well. I understand they just went up to like 55 cents. I have no idea. Yeah. I don't, I haven't bought any. Vicky buys them. But mm. yeah, let me just, if you're licking stamps, I think you're, you're probably doing yourself a disservice. Um, let's see. Next up, Jason, uh, Jason. <laughs> Justin Bieber, <laughs> that's how familiar I am with him. <laughs> Justin Bieber is as old as the PlayStation. Oh, dang. Uh, Justin, who gave us hits like Sorry and Baby, was born on March 1st of 1994. And the very first PlayStation, which gave us hits like Tekken, The Need for Speed, Final Fantasy VI, was also born in 1994. And if you're a Nintendo fan... Super Metroid also came out that year. The idea that those things happened at the same time is enough to make you need to lie down on the floor and stare at the ceiling with existential panic passes. Yeah, I'm just not a Justin fan. My mama likes everyone, but she doesn't like you. <laughs> I think that's one of his hits too. <laughs> okay, now this one. Uh, the Dancing Uga Chaka Baby from Ali McBeal. Oh my God! Would have graduated college. Oh. So if you remember the show Ali McBeal, uh, they introduced this animated baby. Yeah. That did an endless cha cha type dance, uh, and that's from the late 1990s. Uh, they eventually moved on and forgot about the dancing baby. And while we weren't paying attention. That baby went and grew up. Well, not technically. It's not a real baby. But if it wasn't just computer animation, in the 22 years that have passed 
since the Uga Chucka baby would officially be an adult now, possibly one that's just graduated from college and started its own LinkedIn page. Oh my God, Ronnie. And you know why they called it the Uga Chucka? No. Because that was from that song, I think by Sweet, yeah. uh, Hooked on a Feeling. Mm -hmm. And Man they start out, original. they start out, uh, Uga Chucka, Uga Chucka. And that's... Yeah. Well, I've heard of the term. I thought you were going to... Oh, no. No. no, no. Oh, I'm sorry. What is this just in? Breaking news? We have breaking news for you. The Taco Bell Chihuahua has been dead for 10 years. Oh, that's heartbreaking. The adorable pup, who appeared in dozens of Taco Bell commercials during the late 90s, was once the most famous dog in fast food. The commercials and the accompanying beguiling catchphrase... Yo quiero Taco Bell have been gone for several decades now, but we all just assumed the Mexican food-loving Chihuahua was still alive and well, consuming far too many chalupas for her own good. Sadly, sadly, friends, the dog, who was named Gidget, passed away in 2009 from a stroke, according to her owner. That's very sad. That's super sad. All right. This one... Motorola Razor. I don't know if you had one. Flip phone. Oh, no, I never did have one of those. Before iPhones became the norm, the only choices of mobile phones were a Nokia or a Motorola. And I had plenty of both. Uh -huh. The Motorola Razor, which in hindsight sounds like it should be awesome, electric Razor, was the most coveted phone on the market in 2004 with its dual color screens which means it had two colors on the screen. Wow, dual. Like black and white, I guess. Was <laughs> uh, dual colors and slim flip phone aesthetic. But as one Reddit, noter, uh, Reddit user noticed, today a Motorola Razor is on display at the Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn, Michigan. Uh, what was re very recently cutting edge now is in a museum. Aren't they all? And I love that flip phone. That thing was very, very well, cool. I got to say, when somebody says something to me like, uh, oh, I got to get a picture of that, and they go, they yeah. flip open the phone. Oh, my God. <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> really, a flip phone? Not even, not even a smartphone? <laughs> an Android? Or let my, alone an iPhone? One of my friends just got a puppy. And he sent me a video of the puppy playing with his older dog. Uh, and the video is so <laughs> awful. It's got to be taken on his iPhone 2. I don't know. Because <laughs> it is really primitive. It's an H-phone. Oh, man. Yeah, it, it does. All right. Well, we hope you've enjoyed our trip down memory lane and things that are much older than you actually thought they were. Yep. Kind of like qu us. Not quite as old as us, right. but they're old. And uh, and we appreciate it. So leave your comments below if we've missed anything or something you'd like to suggest. You guys are always so creative with the comments. Leave them below. Uh, if you enjoyed the show today and you think it's worthy of a like, please give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to our channel. Very simple to do. Not going to come to your house and kick your garbage cans over if you don't do it. But we would have... Well, Ronnie might. We would appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. Uh, that's going to about do it. May the 4th be with you today. And also with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Lou Gallagher. Corvette Ronnie. Next time on Men Are So Smart.